yum 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 Welcome to The Pantry at the Elaine Dobbins Center for Autism. And it is so appropriate that we are here this month because this is National Autism Awareness Month. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Steve, speaking of Elaine Dobbins, Actually, Elaine's going to be our guest on our show today. She certainly is. Yes, and uh, we're going to be making some beautiful samosas, Indian food that I believe she likes, and uh, made them nice and spicy. And that's because she's actually going to be heading to India, which she's going to tell us all about later on the program. Also, a lot of people are um, using fresh herbs these days, and when you buy them at that's the... That's herbs, Colonel. Herbs. Okay. You say herbs, I say herbs. Uh, when you buy them at the supermarket, it can be quite expensive, but you know what? You can grow your own. You can. And Chef... Gregory Brzezinski of The Vault. That's two chefs. Okay, two chefs, one critic today. Wow, you're ganging up on me. Anyway, uh, he's going to show us his herb garden and um, show us uh, exactly uh, what it's like growing them. He's got quite a variety to show us. Now, we've got a couple of uh, lovely appetizers here that Chef Wayne White has laid on for us. What I have here, Carl, is a beautiful risotto, uh, Parmesan risotto uh, cake. And what mm -hmm. do you have there? Well, I have an arugula goat cheese salad with a citrus beet. And uh, I should mention at this point that the pantry is what you call a social enterprise. Uh, the revenue from this restaurant goes to supporting the programs that they lay on here at the Elaine Dobbins Center for Autism. Now, we've got dinner coming up. Stay tuned for that, or our main course, I should say, plus dessert. But uh, first, we have to get going on these appetizers. Indeed we do. It's absolutely delicious. There's enough light here to read, but in some restaurants it's so dark you can't read the menu. They need to have at least enough light at the table to read. Welcome, Elaine Dobbin. Thank nice, you, Nice to have you with us today. Uh, now, uh, we're doing something special for you today, and that's because we heard that you're going to be going to India. I'm going to India to do volunteer work in November, which I'm looking forward okay, to. Okay, what part of India are you going? A little community called Panji. Oh, I see. And what sort of volunteer work? Will Working you? with very young children and very young moms. Okay. Uh, hopefully, trying to convince the moms that they can do better with themselves. Okay. And do and, things like this. And Steve, Steve actually has uh, come up with an Indian recipe for us today. Well, that, well that's perfect because India is, is well renowned for its food, of course. Yeah. And what I'm going to make today is some samosas, and I'm going to show you how very easy it is to make them. So, what I've got here, Carl's got a very hot frying pan. A pan that's quite hot. <laughs> We're going to add some oil yeah. to that, and then we're just going to add some onions. Let them fry out, so mm. to speak, so there we go. Samosas are a really popular snack, not only in India, but in a lot of uh, Asian countries, I believe. And these are not going to be too spicy. What I'm going to be using in there, Carl and uh, Elaine, I'm just going to be using a little bit of Madras curry powder, so it's not too hot. It's a blend of spices, so we can add that into there now. And again, on, on personal preference, how much you would like to put in there, so. Wonderful smell. So we're going to let that cook out a little bit there now, so. I think, Elaine, you should be doing this, actually, not me here. Absolutely, <laughs> I'd be delighted to. Uh, so how did, you, uh, how did you come up with the idea to go to India? How did that come about? Actually, when Craig and I, of course, went there several years back, uh, I was very taken with the Indian people, and there's, it's such a wealthy country, but so much poverty, mm -hmm. uh, especially amongst the young children. And I initially wanted to go with the Tibetan Children's Village, but that didn't work out for me. So I'm going with the Grace Children's Society um, in Panji. It's a very poor community, mm. and I'm looking forward to hopefully making a little difference there. Sure, if I can. yeah. So you, are you going over, over with other volunteers from here? Or? No, I'm the O. It's just me, myself, and I. Oh. Um, it's, um, I wanted to do something on my own. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that'll be an interesting experience. So that's nicely done, just as we have. Uh, what I've done here, I've just cooked some local potatoes off, and I've mashed them, but coarsely mashed them. And I'm just going to add that into the uh, onions and the, and the curry powder there. And these, of course, are going to be a vegetarian one. Uh, but you can make uh, with protein. You can use the lamb. You can use chicken. Uh, you could use turkey in it, which is ground up, and actually add that to the, uh, to the mix as well. So, but uh, I chose to do this one today. 
Now, Elaine, uh, this is uh, Autism Awareness Month, October's Autism Awareness Month, and what uh, what sort of things uh, do you have planned for uh, for this month to raise awareness? Well, we, on October the 11th, we have a Ladies of Country Music concert being held with some wonderful local entertainers, uh, Maureen and Karen Ennis, Sh Sheila Williams, Colleen Power, just to name a few. Then on October the 26th, we have um, the Autism Walk, Awareness Walk, and last year we raised $36,000 on that wow. walk, so we're hoping to increase the amount this year, yep. so please, everybody, get involved. Yeah, you can really start to it's get the aroma mm -hmm. from that. Absolutely. Now, right? yeah. So I'll just add some peas into there now for a little bit of colour. Oh, the scent Perfect. is one of mm. the aroma. Perfect. It really does have a wonderful aroma, yeah. So that's just regular curry spice you put it in. It is there, yeah. yeah. Um, of course, if, if, again, on personal preference, you can use the uh, regular curry powder, then add some few chilies in there as well, if you wish, so just to spice it up a little bit. Mm. But we're cooking for the masses today. Do you cook uh, at all, Elaine, or? I love to cook. Um, I always enjoyed cooking. I'm getting back into the routine of cooking yeah. again, and um, I like to entertain. My husband and I always did. Yes. But unfortunately, I didn't get to cook as often as I would like to have, but I'm doing a lot more now. Yeah, it's good It's good uh, therapy too, you know? I find it's uh, very relaxing. It's good cooking. for the mind, heart, and soul. Absolutely. And the tummy. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, Elaine, now, now that's just about cooked, actually, because all the ingredients were just about there. What I would do then, I'll just turn the stove off, and I would allow it to chill. Because what we're going to do, we're going to be making our pockets in a, uh, actually what I've got here is some, uh, not the wong tom, we've got the egg roll wrappers. And I triangles. Do have triangles, so I just cut yep. them in half like this. And I've got some mix here that's already cold. So I'm just gonna, a little dab of water, like so. And then we're just gonna make a pocket like that, almost like a, an ice cream cone. That's exactly like so. what and and did you make these, Steve, the wrappers? No, actually, no. I, I just bought them at the store. Uh -huh. um, and they're an ideal product. They're very reasonable. They're only about like a dollar a piece, a, a, a $2 a package, like so. So just push that in nicely, like so. And then a little bit more water over. And then we just form it into a triangle, like so. You make it look so simple. And then I'm just going to pop them into the, to the fryer. So I'll just have two or three ready, and then we'll drop them down. And uh, away we go. Elaine, how did you get, uh, get involved with autism in the first place? A friend of mine, Joyce Churchill, who is the president of ASNL, she came uh, to visit with me um, one day for lunch and uh, we started chatting. She was pretty stressed at the time because she has a 27-year-old autistic son. And I just said, how can I help you, Joyce? And we started making plans. and. Mm -hmm. I've been involved ever since, and I guess that was in about 2002, 2003, when we first started. Mm -hmm. So we've come a long way. Yes, you certainly have, because uh, I guess prior to that, there probably weren't very many services available for uh, people with autism. There really weren't. They were certainly uh, overlooked and off the radar screen. The government tried to do what they could, but unfortunately, uh, there needed to be more intervention. Mm -hmm. And our center certainly does that. We have a uh, hundred of our members going through for different programs in the run of a week. Uh, we have, um, well, since January of 08, we've had, uh, for the first eight months, 52 children diagnosed with autism. And 2007, there were 102 diagnosed with autism. So it's and great need there, and uh, we're looking at expanding our roles, and hopefully in the future. Mm -hmm. Steve, uh, could you? Uh, I'd like you to just take us through how you uh, how you how you make that cone-shaped affair. No problem. <laughs> because whatsoever. I know people will probably, uh, having seen it just once, <laughs> will have a little bit of difficulty okay. doing that. What we've got to here is just the triangle of the of the egg roll. We'll just cut it in half. We'll just get the water and just put it down one side like so. Then just roll it over. So then we're going to form a pocket. There we go. And then there'll be a test at the end of the show. It's like everything else. It looks really simple, <laughs> but when you go to do it yourself, right? All yeah. Fingers. yeah. There we go. Just put a little bit out there. It's best to keep them chilled. That, that's why yeah. the mix should be chilled, and yeah. also the the wrappers themselves. So there we go, like that. 
And this is something that folks uh, in, in Asia, they just have it as a snack. Very much so. And what we're going to be serving here is uh, a chutney. It's a mango chutney which I made and uh, it's just mangoes, a little bit of sugar, some, uh, some chilies in there and a little mm. bit of vinegar and just cooked it all the way through. So, so I've got them, I've got all five of them there. Yeah. So I'll just pop it into the fryer. Down they go. Down they go. It shouldn't take very long for those. Oh, to I'd say under. maybe a couple of minutes at the yeah, moment. That's, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So. Should they be a golden brown? Or yeah, we're, we're going to make them nice and golden brown, yeah. So uh, what, about the, uh, what about the Elaine Dobbins Center now at Shamrock Farm? What type of services are provided there? What, 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 what actually happens inside those buildings? Well, we have programs uh, where, depending on the ages of the children, we have uh, assistant office programs, we have music program, woodworking. For example, this past summer, our residents or our clients um, had made wood boxes mm -hmm. and grew the plants in the greenhouse. And we saw those as a fundraiser, uh, but also they were learning to do things for themselves. And then we have two of our, or some, with two working there right now in our kitchen at the pantry. Uh, we, the computer program, uh, swimming. Mm. Um, we have all kinds of activities and we, we really, um, we don't have the space that we really require, unfortunately, mm. to accommodate everybody. But it's, we're, we're working our way through it. So it's basically um, from cradle to grave. It's all it's all ages. It is that you, uh, the you help. senior program or the oh, our more adult uh, mm -hmm. clients. They're going to be doing more in farming. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to have a Christmas tree farm mm -hmm. uh, starting up in the very near future. Um, growing herbs. Which we we'll be knocking on your door. Oh, yes, please, <laughs> right. we Fresh welcome herbs it. Are, yeah. sure that's Fresh for every herbs restaurant yeah. to know, actually. You are mm -hmm. growing that in this... Yeah. Because everybody's using them now. Restaurants mm -hmm. are always looking for fresh herbs. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's, there's a real market for that. Well, our greenhouse is there again. It's not big enough, but yeah. uh, we may end up having to add a second one, uh, which we look forward to doing. Well, it's great that they have an advocate like you. Well, uh, I've got great supporters in the, yeah. in the um, center. Um, the parents are really wonderful. Yeah. Our board, our they go beyond the call of duty. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me, it's a lot of others there contributing. And Trish Green, our director, she's, she's made a big difference yes. for us as well. Yeah, yeah. And you have your little restaurant there, the pantry, the which pantry. Uh, yes. Steve and I uh, uh, have visited. And uh, food there is great. And full marks, full marks. Full marks. Yeah. Thank yeah. Full you. marks. Uh, we think it's yeah. pretty special. It is, yeah. yeah. It's a bit, got a very unique niche where it's situated. Uh -huh. and, uh, it was it was quite an enjoyable time we had there. Yeah. And as we've said before, uh, some some of the funds um, from the restaurant actually go into providing some of the services. All the funds. That are, that are all <laughs> the, funds. <laughs> the problem is it's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> so please right. come eat at the pantry. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, we certainly encourage everybody to do that. That's for Thank sure. You. So, Steve, uh, are we uh, are we pretty much done? There, we've got nice and golden. Oh. Right there. Oh, they're beautiful. So we're just about ready to serve up with okay. our beautiful chutney, and away we go. You know? All right. Well, I'm going to head down to the wine cellar and uh, check out uh, who's there and come up with somebody's the, there. I think who's so. There? I think Jeremy's yeah, there. Down. I'm going to Jeremy. I'm gonna, Elaine, I'm going to select a wine. I'll Thank be back. you. I look forward to it, Carol. Very good. Oh, Carl. Oh, hi, Jeremy. I. Uh, did I give you a key to the cellar? Uh, yeah, I think I took one last time, but that's that's not the point. Listen, you got to talk to your buddy Steve. If you left the door open, you could have had a cellar full of vinegar here. Expensive vinegar. It's lucky I showed up when I did. I <sighs> saved you. Uh, listen, Steve did not leave the door open, okay? He did. He didn't leave the door I open. I could smell the spice down here. This, this well, is smells your... Like spice. You, Watson. You can, you can smell the spice all over the house. He's cooking samosas for samosas. Elaine Dobbin up there. Well, that's original. Yeah, he... Listen, you have to get over this thing about Steve, okay? Don't. This doesn't become you, okay? You're very catty. You're very, very catty. Oh, Jerry. Carl. <laughs> How you I doing? got your message about the show. One yeah. chef, one critic. Right. I borrowed some chef gear. I'm all ready to go. I uh, hope you don't mind. And I'm ready to show the world my cooking skills. So. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. But, uh, Jeremy, uh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, uh, we don't want you to cook on the show. We've already got it. And... Uh, it doesn't become you because you're a very nice guy, and and I want you to grow up about this particular issue. I'll okay? get over it. I'll you need get to over get over it. it, okay? Okay. Now, what do you have? Of course, Jacobs Creek. This is Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, sparkling wine. We're gonna do sparkling day with samosas. Samosas 
it kind of has that spice to it sometimes. It can be a little hot with chilies, things like that, and curry. Jacob's Creek Chardonnay Pinot Noir, basic uh, champagne blend. 11.5% for most of these. Uh, higher alcohol with any kind of heat or spice is going to really intensify that and really going to make it seem a lot hotter than it actually is. This is great because uh, I've had this one before. It's an Australian and a very reasonably priced. It is. This would be, you yep. know, under $20 range. Mm. Next up, probably around the $30 range, mm. Cannavale, mm. El Buena Brut, Prosecco. Mm. This is an Italian sparkling wine. Fantastic producer, does a really great job of this wine. Actually, he represents most of the Prosecco area for international tastings. Yeah. I'm really a nice. big fan of this one, Cannavale, yeah. Again, lower alcohol, really nice yep. sort of fruit forward. Higher end, of course. Well, what can you Champagne, say? Champagne, Veuve Clicquot, Ponsardin. This mm. is the sort of premium brewed champagne, non-vintage, of course. Champagne, you're looking anywhere between, say, $60, and it could be up from there right to the $200 range if you want it. So, I mean, there's three great options for uh, samosas, if you'd like. I think either one of these would go really well with the samosas. Well, maybe try the uh, um, Cannabis, the Prosecco. It's a little, not as sort of heavy yeah. in the bread dough flavors, yeah. a little lighter in, in taste, really nice. Yeah, I know a friend of mine is very high on uh, Prosecco. He, he was at the Olympics, actually, uh, when they were held in uh, Torino. Oh, wow. Drank a lot of Prosecco, so... Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Elaine Dobbin actually is a guest today. I think she'd oh, like great. this one. She'll okay, uh, thanks a lot. You're welcome. And um, tell uh, Steve to close the door behind him from now on. Uh, Thank it you. wasn't Steve. Okay, I'll okay. work on it. And by the way, Steve didn't leave the door open. I saw you. Well, Elaine, the food's all ready. We're, again, we're waiting for Carl. Where is he? Well, I wish he'd hurry up, because I'm starving. <laughs> yeah. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> now, Jeremy. Jeremy. Yep. Yeah. Yes, Jeremy recommended sparkling wine today with our samosas. Oh, perfect. Oh. And I was tickle pink, because I love <laughs> sparkling wine. And this is actually a Prosecco. It's Cannavale Prosecco from Italy. Here we go. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, why don't we just pass that one down? And this one will be for you, Elaine. And uh, he assures me that uh, this will go very well indeed with our samosas. This is a medium-priced wine. Uh, Steve, these samosas look really good on the plate, I must say. They do, especially with the chutney there mm. and a little bit of fresh mango. I think yeah. it's really high in the plate, doesn't it? You've done, yeah. a, you've done a fine job. So you've taught me well. You've taught yeah. me well. <laughs> so uh, let's have a taste, shall we? Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, they're so nice and crispy. Mm, they are. I guess, uh, Elaine, you've probably tasted samosas in India, have you? Or? Yes, I have, but yeah. they weren't like this. Oh, they've got a nice color on the inside. They do. Yeah. Had a great time. So, everybody, if you want this recipe, just go to centraldairies.com, click on the One Chef One Critic webpage, and you get Stephen's recipe, and you're going to get one of Elaine's recipes. And it comes from this oh. wonderful book called Food for Thought, which Elaine uh, produced uh, a few years back for um, charity. And uh, the recipe that Elaine has selected from this book for us is Quenelle Lyonnaise, which is, well, codfish puffs, I guess you could. <laughs> in wine sauce. <laughs> yeah, in a wine sauce. Thank you for being with us, Elaine. Thank you. It's chin, my chin. pleasure. Cheers. There we go. Cheers. Wonderful. For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you and a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. Here's a neat trick. To stop your cutting board from moving around, put a damp cloth underneath it. Stop it from wiggling. Oh, Steve, look how decadent this chocolate cheesecake looks. And look at my beautiful pumpkin creme brulee. Mm. Now, some people say herbs, others say herbs, but no matter how you say it, fresh is what's important, especially when you grow the flavorful plants yourself in your own garden. And you don't have to have a really green thumb to do that, right, Steve? No, Carl. Gregory Brzezinski, the chef of the vault, he's growing his own herbs in a big way and using them in his restaurant. Okay, you folks look at the herbs and uh, we'll I'm going to look at this dessert. <laughs> it's just like chocolate butter. 
Well, Steve, my gosh, this this herb garden of Gregory's is really impressive. It's humongous, and to think that it's in the city as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've grown things in pots before, but never on this scale. Gregory, how are you doing? Hi, good. Come out here. This is Gregory Brzezinski, folks. He's the executive chef of the Vault Restaurant in downtown St. John's. Now, a lot of chefs and home cooks are really getting into fresh herbs these days. That that seems to be almost a mantra with a lot of cooks. And uh, Gregory, uh, why did you decide to grow all of your own fresh herbs for the vault here? Well, being in a business for so long, you know, uh, fresh herb is very essential, you know, and uh, I really, really wanted to do that on my own. And with the help of uh, my uh, mother-in-law, we, uh, we did a nice uh, little beautiful garden. And I was actually inspired by Mr. Rubinovich from the Garden Garden, and uh, that's what started. Now, savory is the uh, herb of choice, I guess, in Newfoundland and Labrador, and I see, well, now you can experiment with anything. Oh, pretty much anything. You know, whatever is available in the stores, you can buy it and start your own uh, garden or just, just a little pot or anything. There's so many herbs these days. And how many would you have here? Oh, I have probably more than 30 different ones, you know, the most common ones. Well, that's a full menu, 30, 30 items. Oh, <laughs> they're needed, believe me. Hey, Gregory, you have things growing here that um, I haven't seen before, frankly. Um, just, just give us a rundown of some of the more unusual herbs that you have growing. Um, some of the most unusual that I have grown is, I would say, the curry plant, which is beautiful and it's very, very powerful. Uh, Thai spicy basil, mm. it's another thing, and uh, pineapple mint. That's what would you use the spicy basil in? Spicy basil, I, I tried it with my uh, tomato sauce. It turned out to be absolutely beautiful. In your restaurant? Absolutely, yeah. In my restaurant, I tried it. Uh, that was like a probably a month ago, and, and it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Changed that big time. You have a buffet of flavors. Absolutely, yeah. It's a bouquet of flavors. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very nice. Now, a lot of people uh, might be under the impression that it's difficult to grow herbs, but uh, actually it probably isn't, is it? Uh, and, and I noticed in, in your back garden here, you've got a lot of things growing in pots, which cuts down on space. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, it's not very difficult. It's actually easier for herbs rather than vegetables. You can have your own big pot, get your soil, and buy whatever is available in the store as, a, as a herbs. And you can start your own things. You're going to be very, very happy to see your own things growing, you know. It's beautiful. And change the dishes big time, people. Big time. And the lack of sunshine doesn't seem to have affected your herbs at all? Not at all, no. As long as you have sometimes rain and a little bit of sun, that's that's all good. And the season is very short? Season is short, but, uh, but it probably starts around uh, July, early July, uh, maybe late June, depends, and, and lasts till almost the end of September. Perfect, yeah. Well, I understand you have something a little special waiting for us out back, so maybe we should uh, wander back there and check it out. This is a real celebration of the bounty of your herb garden. Explain what we've got here. Uh, my mother-in-law has uh, prepared for us uh, fresh dill tea biscuits and uh, fresh uh, goat cheese with our uh, Italian parsley and nasturtiums. Mm. And of course, our five uh, different uh, spice uh, black tea. Five different spices in the tea? Yes. So where did you come up with the recipe for the tea? Uh, well, that's actually Marina's idea. and um, Your mother-in-law? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, let's try the tea. Well, I, th I think we're, I'm going to have a sip and see what this tea tastes like. I think Steve has already uh, had a few sips. <laughs> well, that's where I was educated from. I'm a tea yeah. drinker. <laughs> it's beautiful. It Good really is. Very fragrant. Yes. Well, let's get stuck in and uh, see what this food tastes let's like. Let's go. It's been great spending some time with you today, I must say. It's absolutely wonderful. Well, Steve, that was another great episode. Indeed it was. I forgot to uh, notice whether Gregory Brzezinski said herbs or... He said herbs. herbs. He said herbs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course he said herbs. Two chefs sticking together. Absolutely. I'm stuffed now, but uh, I'll be hungry again this time next week. So please join us for another edition of... One Chef. One Critic. When your cutting board moves around on your countertop, put a damp cloth of... <laughs> Here's a neat trick. When using a cutting board and it wiggles around, put a damp cloth of... <laughs> we were doing so good.